Welcome everyone. Uh, today we're going to take a look at our lab for um, an investigation on fingerprints. Um, ideally, you've gone through uh, basically the three parts that I've made for this unit. Um, you've got a decent idea of the history of fingerprints and how they came to play, you know, maybe even a little bit about the form or how they form or why we even have them in the first place. Um, you should have a decent understanding of the three main pattern types. Um, that's the loop, the whirl, the arch, um, how we're going to be describing them, which is what the ridges are doing and uh, how many deltas are present. And lastly, you should have an idea of types of fingerprints that can get left behind. So there's a lot of info in this. Uh, it actually works out to be a pretty cohesive <laughs> review of the entire unit. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just jump in here. So what I want you to get out of this, or uh, what I'd like you to kind of finish with, is um, a better understanding of what type of prints you have and uh, the fingerprint characteristics, um, some decent review of all the other information that I just previously rattled off. So I, I hope you know why we care about fingerprints in forensic science. We know that uh, your fingerprint, it's a uh, unique identifier. And uh, previously we said uh, even identical twins are gonna have different fingerprints. So identical twins aren't necessarily identical. Um, that means that when you're forming in the womb, uh, you know, at about 10 weeks, we said that's when your fingerprints develop. Um, say you were with a twin, or let me back up here. Say there's a woman who's pregnant with twins. The little bit of blood flow that's different from one fetus to the next, that's going to change how that basal layer grows, and uh, that's going to determine how the fingerprint actually forms. So uh, you might remember we saw that one little like sandwich picture that had the three kind of layers of skin. And uh, just how I used to keep it straight, this top guy is called the epidermis. Uh, EP, ep, sounded like up to me. So I thought, oh, okay, well, that's the uppermost layer. And then there's this deepest layer, that's the dermis. So I used to think, okay, well, deepest is a dermis. And then by default, this basal layer, that's uh, where your fingerprint is housed. So it's not new that... Uh, fingerprints are unique identifiers. That's not something that's just been discovered. Uh, we've known for thousands of years uh, that, you know, fingerprints are unique identifiers. You might remember we saw those ancient clay Babylonian tablets where uh, somebody had to sign off with their thumbprint versus a written signature. Um, but what has changed is technology, right? I mean, the ways that we could gather or interpret or store or compare fingerprints, that's crazy different than, you know, leaving behind a thumbprint in the clay. So um, with that being said, uh, fingerprints, there's another way you could kind of refer to them. Sounds sophisticated to say the uh, dermal ridge or the uh, frictional ridge. Um, the reason that these terms are used is a uh, derma, that's a prefix. Uh, like if you went to the dermatologist, you'd go see the skin doctor. These are skin ridges. So, you know, if you think of this as a microscopic view, right? These little raised parts here, these ridges, those would be the prints you leave behind. So why would we call them frictional ridges? Well, I mean, it's great that they're unique identifiers, but Mother Nature gave us to them because they help us grip. So these ridges actually supply a little bit of friction. And uh, as you grab onto things, that's going to make it easier for you to grip. Uh, remember that you've also got uh, dermal ridges or friction ridges on uh, the beds of your feet and your toes. And uh, they're not just exclusive to the tips of your fingers. They actually run all down your hands. All right. So types of prints that could be left behind. Um, there are three types of prints you could leave behind. And that's kind of what we're going to look at in this lab. Uh, there is what's referred to as the patent print, the plastic print, and the latent print. So a uh, little bit about these guys. A patent print. Uh, perhaps you've heard of a patent press. It's where a, a mold or a, um, a pattern gets pushed into ink and then pushed out onto another substance. And what's left behind is the pattern of that print. So why the heck would they call these patent fingerprints? Well, 
often they're referred to as visible fingerprints and that's because you can see them easily. So if I were to touch mud or blood or ink and then touch something else, I'm going to leave behind a pattern of my fingerprint. That would be referred to as a patent fingerprint. Sometimes we leave an impression. That's referred to as a plastic fingerprint. So if I were to touch something like, um, you know, uh, maybe drying blood or something that was tacky, maybe like a, a wet bar of soap, um, if I pushed my finger into like wax or putty, that's going to leave an impression of the print pattern on my finger. That's referred to as a plastic fingerprint. And a latent fingerprint, that's the opposite of blatant. So like if I said, you're blatantly rude, that would mean that you are obviously being rude, not to imply that you would. If I said you were blatantly kind, how about that? Um, then that would mean that you were very, very kind. So uh, latent is the opposite, not so obvious. These guys are often referred to as hidden fingerprints. So like if I take something like this plastic surface on this tape, I don't even really have to roll it, but if I just, I can actually, I mean, I'm sure it's not gonna show up on my, camera here, but if I look at it and I kind of bend it and I see the reflection of the light, I can actually see that mark from the oils on my fingers that were left behind. That's referred to as a latent fingerprint. So in a previous unit, when we looked at evidence, you might remember I said, man, it's weird. You just got to trust me. But why fingerprints are referred to as physical evidence rather than biological evidence is when investigators collect prints. If it's a patent fingerprint, They've really just collected blood or paint or ink or whatever that's in the pattern of your print. It's not really biological material. If it's a plastic fingerprint, uh, you know, squished down an impression into uh, clay or wax or soap or whatever, that's really just whatever that material was, and it's an impression of your fingerprint. Now, if it's a latent fingerprint, that's the oils from your body left behind. So I'm kind of taking a guess here, but I'm going to make the assumption that since two of the three aren't biological material, they decided to leave the fingerprints as um, physical evidence. So we've also looked at loops, whirls, and arches. And uh, if that means nothing to you, the loop, the whirl, or the arch, I would encourage you to go back and look through um, your, your second set of lecture notes because it's really chock full of all of this information. But uh, just to recap real quickly, you know, uh, the population, loops are more common than whirls, and they're more common than arches at about 65, 30, and 5% respectively of the population. The way we're going to define them are loops, ridges enter and exit the same side, one delta. Arches, enter one side, exit the other, zero deltas. And whirls, I've been referring to them as like that bullseye shape, and they've got the two deltas kind of squished on both sides of the uh, bullseye to keep it from rolling away. You should be kind of familiar with terms like what the core is. Uh, when I talk about a delta, you know, should put a triangle around that guy, right? Uh, you should know what the delta is. Um, if I were to ask you about a ridge count, that should sound kind of familiar, and you should actually be able to run one from a print that you leave behind. Um, I also want you to be aware of that uh, there is lots of minutia. That's minute. If I said there's a minute chance of a snow day tomorrow, that means small. So a minutia, that just means small bits of detail, that would separate like one loop that appears to be very, very similar from another loop that's very, very similar, whatever those patterns might be. Don't be surprised if when you look at your own print, it doesn't fall nice and neat into a whirl or an arch or a loop category. Again, keep in mind, there's um, lots of subdivisions of each of these or like types of loops and types of arches or types of whirls. But, um, you know, if you see those, that's fantastic. But I'm not going to hold you accountable for that. So lots of good information here, right? What do we have to do? I want you to pick one of the three parts. And then once you've got the one of the three parts completed, uh, you should be able to work your way through the discussion questions. 
I would encourage you to try more than one of the three parts, but um, I, I think you can get the idea if um, we just kind of take a peek at, you know, one of the three. Okay, so should you choose part one, you're going to make a patent fingerprint. Cash, I don't even remember what that means. All right, well, you know, I've got the information in the background. You can always hop back up here or it might be helpful to have your lecture notes out as you go through this. That's the inked fingerprint or the visible fingerprint. And if I take a look at this page, a lot of stuff going on, right? So on this, I said, you know, to use your thumbprint if you're going to do it. If you choose part one, um, you're going to need like an ink pad or uh, you could take like a little bit of pen uh, or marker maybe and uh, on a scrap piece of paper, just kind of go back and forth until you build up like a little reserve of ink and then uh, see if you dap your finger in there. But here's what I want you to keep in mind. If I'm going to do this, I don't want to just go, say this is my little ink pile here. I don't want to just go boop, boop. You want to roll your finger. Remember, there's all kinds of information off on the sides here. So if you choose, I'd like you to do your thumbprint, but if that's not working, it's not the end of the world. It's just, you know, your thumbs, your arguably your largest print. So I thought you'd get more detail. I think if you find, you try to roll it just on the middle of your desk, uh, sometimes your thumb gets kind of caught by your hand. So if you were to uh, go to the edge of your desk, say this is the edge of my desk here, and I've got my paper and I start on the edge and I go in one smooth roll motion, um, you, you leave all that information there behind. So let's say I'm at the edge of my desk though, and I'm like, man, let me make sure I get that on there really good. If you just like rock it back and forth, you're, you're gonna just keep smearing and smudging and destroying all that information. So if you'd like, um, and you, you, know, you choose part one, and you're gonna do an inked print of um, you know, your thumb here, uh, if you choose, I just put some extra boxes here to, you know, take a look at your other fingers. If I have a loop on one hand, does that mean I have to have loops everywhere? Uh, do, you know, could I have a loop and a whirl and an arch? Uh, I would encourage you to take a look. But I want you to at least get one. And then if you've got a handy dandy blippy magnifying glass laying around like I do, um, my kid likes blippy. Anyway, guys, uh, you know, if you've got a magnifying glass around, that would be great. It, you know, you can take a look easily at the uh, the information that's there. If you don't, um, you know, I think you'll find that your phone uh, with either taking still pictures or video and magnifying in actually allows you to zoom in and see detail pretty clearly. And then uh, answer the supplied information, at least for one print here. Should you choose to do others? Awesome. Cash, I don't have an ink pad. I don't want to get my fingers dirty. Okay, I can respect that. Then you may choose part two. So if you choose part two, you're going to have to find um, some clay or some uh, putty or, um, you know, maybe you you got a bar soap. Uh, you know, if you get that wet, uh, you could leave a good impression in that. Um, maybe you've got some uh, wax or, you know, I've had kids that have used like some different types of cooking materials uh, that may work. Um, I've got little kids that are running around, so I've got uh, Play-Doh, you know, that, that would kind of work, but say you choose Play-Doh or whatever. What I'm going to do is just kind of flatten this out, and I'm going to try to roll it out so that I get like some smooth edges here. And then, you know, that if I press down on like something like that, it's going to leave an impression, but that's relatively smooth, right? So I'm just going to... That's the magic noise, so I know I did it right. I've got that there and what i'm going to do now is choose a finger i'll choose my thumb press down and i've left an impression and i don't think it'll show up real well on here but if i go back to my handy dandy magnifying glass goodness gracious there's a ton of information left behind there cash i don't have a magnifying glass yeah step a picture with your phone zoom up on it and i bet you'll be able to see an awful lot of detail and i'd like you to do your best to try to sketch what you see here and record that information here. What pattern type do you think you have? And I get that it might not be a crystal clear loop, whirl, or arch like some of the examples that I've shown you in class, but um, you know, do your best. What If it's a subcategory, which it may very well be, which one do you think it would fall into? If 
you're not interested in either of those. Oh boy, uh, yeah, note to self, don't put Play-Doh on the lab. Um, all right, uh, let me set that guy aside there. Uh, you may choose, I kind of like this one the best, uh, part three. So this is one where we're gonna lift our own fingerprint. And uh, here's how this goes. So I got my little scrap piece of paper. Let me set some of my other stuff aside here. And I'm gonna take, uh, this is just a regular old pencil, nothing magical about it. I'm gonna take a, a little back and forth action like that. And what I'm doing is similar to what I was suggesting you could do with ink, um, you know, or marker on the part one, but this is with a pencil. So I'm building up kind of like a little reserve of graphite. And I don't know, I'll probably do this for a little bit longer there and that should be okay. And then I'm gonna take, uh, I guess I'll do this index finger. And I'm gonna just kind of roll this around like that to get that reserve of graphite onto my finger. And then if you've got some regular old scotch tape, what I want you to do is, remember, distal end, proximal end, those terms might mean something from you for previous units. Put that on my distal end and I'll bend it towards my proximal end, or excuse me, my uh, proximal end, closest to my proximity versus the distal at my furthest distance. If I'm losing you there, take the tape, try to smooth it down. All right, then I can set this aside as there. And uh, carefully, ooh, ever so carefully, I'm gonna try to peel this off and then I'm gonna tape it down right there. And holy smokes, let me see if I lift that up a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how well it's coming through on my cell phone cam here, but uh, there is a ton of detail there. And, uh, you know, there's a couple things that I might find. Man, I wish I had some more information from the sides. Uh, you know, well, experiment a little bit. You can play around with this and try to gather some more information. If you choose to do part three, um, that's how that one goes down. So, again, you want to do them all? Awesome. Uh, you know, I, I'm just going to say pick one part. And uh, take a closer look at your own fingerprints. And once you've gotten to that spot, you should be able to happily and easily answer the discussion questions. Um, as always, if you need some help, please feel free to uh, shoot me an email or see me in class or let me know what I can be of assistance with. I hope you enjoy it and find some new stuff. Enjoy.